Quest 2 is almost three and a half years old. And compared to all the VR headsets out in the market today with different price range, Quest 2 is still one of the most affordable and quality headset in my opinion at the price point of 249. So let's go back to my regular setup and talk a little bit more in depth about the headset. All right, so MetaQuest 2 is a standalone VR headset, meaning that you don't need any external PC to power it. And I think it makes the barrier to enter into the VR world much easier for most people. In case you were curious, Quest 2 still gets the same updates as the Quest 3, so you won't be missing out on any new features for the foreseeable future. For example, with the last V62 update, all Meta Quests, including the Quest 2, are now able to support watching spatial video recordings, which is a feature included in the Apple Vision Pro. This requires you to have the new iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max models, and you can record and upload spatial videos on your iPhone and upload them directly to your Meta app. Spatial video feature was launched to be used with the new Vision Pro, but now you're actually able to use your Quest 2 to view your 3D videos directly in the headset, which is honestly a pretty neat feature. Speaking of the Vision Pro, Quest 2 does support AR see-through capabilities, although it's limited to just black and white, due to its hardware limits of having just four infrared cameras. You can enable double tapping on the side of the headset to enter into the pass-through mode, where you'll be able to see your surroundings, and honestly, it's just good enough to be aware of where things are. You'll actually have to take off the headset in order to check your phone or any other activities that require more than just black and white. So definitely manage your expectations when you're getting the Quest 2 headset, especially with the AR capabilities. Quest 2 does support hand gestures, so if you're lazy or you can't find your controllers, you can definitely get by with using your hands for simple navigations by pointing and pinching with your fingers. It's not the most accurate or the easiest to use, so while it is a nice to have, I still much prefer using the controllers for most games and navigating. It's just much more accurate and efficient. The facial interface of the Quest 2 is this part right here that is in direct contact with your face when you're using the headset, and it's honestly pretty comfortable and soft, but as you can imagine, it's not the most hygienic material to have sit on your face for hours, and it's pretty difficult to clean. So it does come with the rubber cover that can go over the foam interface that's much easier to clean and maintain, but as you can imagine, it's not as comfortable as the foam interface. When it comes to the viewing experience of the Quest 2, you need to understand what the sweet spot is. And if you don't know what that is, it's pretty simple. It basically refers to the most clear area of your vision in the center of the screen. Quest 2 uses Fresnel lenses, and you can tell by these concentric grooves etched into the lenses. They're great, but I have noticed that the sweet spot on the Quest 2 is quite small, meaning that except for the very small area you're directly looking at, the rest of the texts and images are a little bit blurry or pixelated in your vision. Quest 2 weighs about 17.7 ounces, and it comes with this head strap that tightens around the back of your head, as well as the top of your head, and it does a good job of securing the headset, but adjusting the tightness is not the easiest thing to do. Once you're able to adjust the straps and get the right fit for your head, now you need to adjust the IPD to make sure that you get the perfect sweet spot. IPD is your inner pupillary distance, and Quest 2 allows you to adjust between three preset levels. When I measured the IPD of my pupils very professionally, it said 64 millimeters, so I should have been more comfortable with the second level, but I found the third level to be the most comfortable on my eyes over time, so you'll definitely have to play around with it to get the right fit for you. Field of view is also very important when it comes to the VR experience, and that depends on how people set their IPD range as well as the range you have between your eyes and the actual headset. There's no official listing for the field of view for Quest 2, but I'll say it's anywhere from the low 90s to the high 90s in my experience because I definitely noticed the black borders at the edges of my screens, so it'd be nicer to have a higher field of view for better immersion, but I definitely haven't had any distracting experiences because of the field of view. Bluetooth is also available for you to connect to any headphones that you like, and for me personally, I found it be perfect to connect it to my AirPods while using the headset. It does have a surprisingly good built-in speakers that won't blow you away, but it'll allow you to use the headset without any headphones. When you're using the headset, you have to set the area that you're going to play in, known as the boundary. 
you can do a room scale boundary or stationary boundary um, and this will help you basically not bump into things while playing and it'll actually show you pass through mode while playing if you ever step out of the area. I noticed that it remembers your last boundary that you played in so if you're using the headset and you're in a different place than you were when you last played, you'll just have to reset your boundaries. Quest 2 uses USB-C to charge and when it's fully charged, it gives you about 2-3 to three hours of playing time and probably on the shorter end if you're mainly gaming. I'm not gonna lie, I tend to get motion sickness if I try to play any games or watch content on the headset for more than an hour at a time, so the battery life has not been an issue for me. It comes with two controllers that are very solid, and these are non-rechargeable, so each controller takes a single AA battery. Unless you're playing games with the controllers multiple hours a day, with the normal usage of a few hours throughout the week, these will definitely last you at least a few months. All in all, Quest 2 is a great entry-level VR headset for most people. It might lack in some aspects such as pass-through mode for AR or immersiveness when you compare it to other high-end VR headsets in the market, but at its price point of $249, I'd definitely recommend it for most people. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video as I make more contents like this, but thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.